All right. The other day in class when I was working this problem, one of my students asked me a very good question. He asked, um, Anthony asked me, when we're working this problem, should we, should we turn this into radicals like we did the other problems? And the answer is actually no, and here's the reason why not. If you tried turning this into a radical, this would become the fourth root of 25 and then raised to the seventh power. Well, the fourth root of 25 does not turn out to be pretty, okay? So if you tried to turn these into radicals, you'd find out pretty quickly that you were making the problem worse. Here's the approach you need to take here. When you're dividing and you have the same base, remember what you did to the powers before? Hopefully you remember you subtracted. So, I'm going to use laws of exponents here. 25 to a power divided by 25 to a power becomes 25, you don't change the base, and the powers get subtracted. 7 fourths minus 5 fourths. So we use laws of exponents. That becomes 25 to the, luckily these have the same denominator, it makes it easy. That's 25 to the 2 fourths. 2 fourths reduces to 1 half. And remember, raising something to the 1 half power means that I'm taking the square root of it, and the square root of 25 is 5. Okay, the next problem asks us to simplify, and it tells us to assume that all variables represent positive real numbers. That's telling me one thing, that I don't have to worry about slapping on absolute value bars when the index is even, because if a variable is already positive, that means that when I'm taking a square root or a fourth root or a sixth root, the answer is okay the way it comes out. I don't have to worry about allowing, um, getting a negative answer. Okay, there's one thing going on here, and it's one rule you need to remember. When I have a power on the inside and I have a power on the outside to get my new exponent, hopefully you remember to multiply. So, the A doesn't change and the B doesn't change. But to get the new exponent on the A, 12 times 1 fourth, 12 times 1 fourth is 3. And likewise on the B, 16 times 1 fourth is 4. So, pretty direct, okay? Apply laws of exponents to simplify. Okay, remember that when we're multiplying, laws of exponents tell us to leave the base the same and to add the powers. 7 fifths plus 3 fifths. 7 fifths plus 3 fifths becomes 10 fifths. And of course, 10 fifths is 2. So my exponent is 2. Therefore, my answer is x squared. And the final problem on this video. If I'm taking the fifth root of 32x to the 20th, What's really happening here? When I have a product under a radical, I can break this up, okay, by using the product rule of radicals. I can write this as the fifth root of 32 multiplied by the fifth root of x to the 20th. You can pull a radical apart when it's multiplication or division. That's called either the product rule or the quotient rule. The fifth root of 32 what number multiplied by itself five times gives me 32? And that would be 2. When you're dealing with exponents, the easiest way to take the fifth root of something raised to a power and to make the radical totally disappear because you're rewriting it, take the exponent and divide it by the index. 20 divided by 5 is 4. 
That leaves me with x to the fourth. My final answer is 2x to the fourth.